Hola a todos and welcome to another video of our series of Julia videos for programmers or as I call it, the Julia Journey Juggling Jargons Joyfully series. In this video, which might have been split into more parts, I'm going to talk about the development of a new package in Julia. Let me know if you release a new package using the information here. You can post your package in the comments with a short description. It might be useful for the people to know that uh, this video worked. Or if you found something that is not up to date, you can also leave it in the comments and I can uh, maybe add to the description. Okay, so now let's go talk about the docs. So the documentation has the project demo as well. You need, of course, our package, Dice Rolls, uh, but you also need the documenter package. So this is an external package, documenter.jl. Uh, the documentation works by uh, having a make file, which is not a make file, it's just a file named make. And this make file is essentially calling some documenter functions. So you have something to set the metadata, you have something to actually create the documentation, and you have something to deploy the documentation. Uh, and here is the only thing that you're actually going to modify, maybe not frequently, but eventually, is to define the actual pages of your documentation. So here we have a home index, and this index md is located inside another source file inside the docs file. So you normally want to have a few files here to properly explain everything that you want. I at least have a reference, uh, which is for the reference documentation. Reference MD, uh, which is not created by default here. The index is essentially just giving you some meta information. This is part of the Dice Rolls module. A title, this is Markdown. You, you, you need to know it, and I hope you do. Uh, the index of everything in this page and the auto docs for this module. So normally I move this to a reference MD like this. Uh, maybe I should also add this here. And I explain how to use the things here. So. So here you have a simple install from the website. Of course, when you release this package, you can just say add dice rolls. Julia users will normally know what to do because so the last video I talked about this to install packages, it's very easy. So people usually know how to install them. But for now, you can leave it like this or think about people that are not Julia users and that you're trying to convince to use your package. So how do we build this package? So to build this package, you actually have to go to the other folder docs. So I'm going to open a new terminal here and I'm going to enter docs and I'm going to run Julia dash dash project. Uh, when you run Julia dash dash project, project is uh, 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 argument that you can give uh, the folder of the project that you want to activate. When you don't give an argument, it, it's using the current project folder which is for the folder docs. So if you look at the environment, I'm inside the docs folder. So I actually am looking at these dice rolls and this documenter. One interesting thing here, this is something that you don't have to do yourself uh, because it's being done here. But when you clone your package, you have to remember to do it again. Since I want the latest uh, modifications, I want to use the development version of my package. I don't want to add dice rolls, I want to dev. So you can just say dev dot dot, and it's gonna use the development version of my package, okay? So that's important for when you are uh, writing documentation to use the development version of the package. So I'm here inside the package, I'm gonna update things just to make sure that they are up to date uh, and I'm gonna include make the build was quite fast and the build is here and you can just in inspect the files so you can just click here you can copy the path and you can go to your uh, browser and, and paste this so here is our local build of the dice rolls documentation uh, you have the home and you have the install sub uh, subheader and you have the reference so the reference was built automatically by 
default, so it's uh, there's no reason to not have it. We can talk more about the documentation in a future video. Let me know in the comments if you want a video about that. So the GitHub workflows are files for the GitHub Actions service. So if you already know CI CD, you know what these things are. Uh, if you don't, these are things that run automatically whenever you push your code to GitHub. So they have information. Let's open one of them, CI. They have information on when to run and what to run. So first you have here a name. This is the CI. CI stands for Continuous Integration. Uh, you have on. So when does it run? If you make a push to the branch main for the tag, any of those tags or for a pull request. So essentially, if I just create new commits on my main branch or somebody makes a pull request or myself, or if I make a new release, this CI will run. Ignore this concurrency for now. This is advanced feature. The jobs, uh, you have a test job. So what does the test job does? It has a name. It runs on a specific OS operating system. The strategy for this is to not fail fast. So it tries to run everything. Matrix is a, like a combination of things to run. So it runs on versions 1, 1 1.9 and the nightly. So the latest version. So version 1.0 is the, uh, the first stable release, which is from 2018. The long term support or the LTS is the 1.6 now. Uh, from one or two years ago. Uh, so you might want to change this to 1.6, especially if you are using the newest features. Uh, and you can also change this to one, so it runs on the latest released version, which is 1.9. Uh, the nightly is the broken version. So this can break, let's say, because of the nightly version uh, making too many changes. It's not common to break unless you're using really, really cutting edge features or really, really old features, which is uh, the old edge cases, essentially. If it breaks frequently because of something that you're doing, you can remove it from here or comment out. So the OS is right now, it's only building on Ubuntu. You could add other things here. If you don't know what you're doing and you just want to have some tests, just leave it Ubuntu. And the architecture x64, I don't test for any other, but uh, yeah, you might. So which are the steps for the CI? It check out your code. It set up Julia with some uh, information, uh, caches, things if necessary, build the package, run the tests, process the coverage, and then pushes the coverage to the website. So for this to work, you have to set up the code cov. I'm not going to go into details for that. Uh, uh, if you want me to go into details, leave a video in the comment. Um, the documentation then it's built. This is actually in parallel. They don't have to be built at the same time. So the documentation is uh, essentially the same in the beginning. And then you have checkout set up Julia. Configure the documenter environment, then build and deploy. And the doc deployment is putting your documentation in the branch GH pages. And the GH pages, uh, you have to manually modify uh, to be deployed as a GitHub page. Uh, as I said, if you want me to talk more about the documentation, leave a comment. I can be more, I can go more into that. Finally, there's some doc test uh, going on here. I have not talked about this again more details in the documentation. Thanks for watching today's video. I hope it was informative to creating your package. If I have split the videos in many parts, I will definitely be reusing this uh, ending. Please like and subscribe uh, if you like the talk about today's subject. <laughs> uh, let me know in the comments if you have more uh, specific needs or if there's something that you did not quite understand. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.